Now in this last part, we're given that the curve C has equation y equals f of x. And the point P is the point minus 1, minus 5 over 2. And it lies on C. And what we've got to do is find an equation of the normal to the curve C at this point P. So I would use the version, the simplified version of f of x that we worked out in the previous part. And to find out the equation of the normal, what I want to do is just do a sketch so that I can understand what the problem looks like. And I quite often get students who say to me, well, you can't draw a sketch. I don't know what this sketch looks like. Well, it doesn't really matter. You can still get an idea of the problem just by drawing some kind of curve. I'll show you. Look, what I'd do is I'd plot my point P at, say, minus 1, minus 5 over 2. So I'll assume it's there. And let's just write that that's the point P at minus 1, minus 5 over 2. And I'd draw some kind of curve that goes through this point. It doesn't really matter what it looks like at this stage. So we'll just imagine that we've got some kind of curve like that. OK? And we'll extend this y-axis down here. Now we know that at this point we've got a tangent. And that tangent most probably then would look something like that. And a normal at that point would be a line perpendicular to it, going something like that. We're just marking that these are perpendicular. So we've got to find the equation of this line. And the equation of any line, OK, it's y equals mx plus c. It has that format. But that's not of much value to us. It's much better to use the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, where x1, y1 is a point on the line. Well, we've got that. We've got the point p is that point on that line. And m is the gradient of this line. We don't know that, unfortunately. But we can get m, that gradient, by working out what the gradient at any point x on the curve is, and then feeding the values of minus 1, um, maybe minus 5 upon 2, into that, that uh, gradient. We get that from differentiating the curve. And then we can use the perpendicular gradient rule. So we should be able to get m, no problems. All right. Well, let's start by trying to get what m is. So we need to differentiate this first of all with respect to x. And I haven't got two functions of x being divided by one another. I haven't got like a 5x on the top here. Because if I did, I'd use the quotient rule. So I'm not going to use the quotient rule. I could, however, bring the 2x plus 1 and the x plus 3 up to the top and get something like 5 bracket 2x plus 1 to the power minus 1 multiplied by x plus 3 to the power minus 1. And to differentiate this, I'd have to use the product rule. Now, that looks quite a lot of work to me because not only would I need the product rule, I'd have to use the chain rule as well to differentiate things like 2x plus 1 to the power minus 1. So I don't really want to do that. But if you want to have a go, I'll leave it to you to try it out. Now, I'm going to do it a much easier way, I think. So we'll just take this out. What I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2x plus 1 and x plus 3. And if I do that, it gets rid of that fraction. I'm also going to divide both sides by y. So what I'm going to end up with is that 2x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 3 would equal 5 divided by y. Now, I'm going to change this 5 divided by y, get rid of the fraction here, get it ready for differentiation by bringing this up to the top. Remember, this is 5 times 1 over y, and 1 over y can be written as y to the minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5y to the minus 1. I'm going to rub it out, though, because I'm running out of room. So hopefully you're OK with that step. Now what I'm going to do is expand the bracket. And if we expand the bracket in the usual way, we get 2x squared. And then we get 6x plus another 1x, which is 7x. And then we've got 1 times 3, which is 3. And that equals 5y 
to the power minus 1. Now what I'm going to do is differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we just put here diff for short with respect to x. Tell the reader what we're doing. And it's easy to differentiate this side with respect to x. Differential of 2x squared with respect to x is going to be 4x. And differential of 7x with respect to x is going to be 7. Differentiate 3, you get 0. But when we come on to differentiating 5y to the minus 1 with respect to x, we do something called implicit differentiation. If you're not sure about implicit differentiation, just go on the website, look under implicit differentiation in the index, and you'll see tutorials on it. What we do is, to get around this problem of differentiating with respect to x, we differentiate this with respect to y, and then multiply it by dy by dx. So, differentiate this with respect to y, you get minus 5y to the minus 2. And then you have to multiply it by dy by dx. So as I say, if you're unsure of that step there, just go on my website, look at implicit differentiation. Now, we can rearrange this to make dy dx the subject. Very easy. So dy by dx equals, well we've got 4x plus 7, and what I want to do is divide both sides by minus 5, so we'll get minus and we'll put that all over the 5. Now remember this is the same as 5 over y squared, because it's y to the minus 2, so I'd multiply both sides by y squared and I'd get that result there. Okay? So, all we need to do now to get the gradient of the tangent is substitute minus 1 and minus 5 upon 2 into our equation. So let's just come down here and we'll finish this off. So we can say that when x equals minus 1, y equals minus 5 upon 2, just substitute this into here, so therefore dy by dx will equal minus, well, we've got 4 times minus 1, which is minus 4, plus the 7 is going to be 3. So we'll put 3 there. It's divided by the 5, and we're multiplying it by y squared. And y is minus 5 upon 2, so minus 5 upon 2, all squared. And if you work this out, you'll end up with a gradient of minus 15 over 4. So the gradient of our tangent at p is minus 15 over 4. Now, we can use the perpendicular gradient rule, which is that the product of the gradient of the tangent and then the normal comes to minus 1. So that means that the gradient of the normal must be 4 fifteenths. It's a simple rule, you just need to change the sign here and invert the fraction. So we've got the gradient now of the normal. So let's just put that in. Therefore, gradient of normal equals 4 fifteenths. So we've got everything we need now to get the equation of the normal. We've got our x1, y1, because it's minus 1 and minus 5 upon 2, respectively. We've got the gradient m, which is 4 fifteenths. So we can say that therefore the equation of the normal, just write that in, write an intro so that the reader knows what we're doing. Equation normal is, and what is it going to be? Well, it's going to be y minus y1, so that'd be minus minus 5 upon 2, so that's plus 5 upon 2, equals m, the gradient, which is 4 fifteenths, multiplied by x minus x1, x minus minus 1, or x plus 1. So, that's fundamentally the answer, because it says find an equation of the normal to c at p. So, they haven't specified any particular format here. So, that will do us, but I'm just going to tidy it up. I'm going to multiply both sides by 30, get rid of the 2 and the 15, and if you did do that, then you're going to get 30y, 
and if you multiply the 5 upon 2 by 30 you'll end up with 75 so we've got plus 75 and then 30 times 4 fifteenths gives us 8 and so we've got 8 multiplied by x plus 1 so it's going to give us 8x plus 8 and what I'm going to do now is just rearrange this in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0 in other words we therefore have 8x minus 30y and if we take 75 from the 8 we're left with minus 67 and that will equal 0 so there's another form for the equation of the normal OK, well I hope that's given you some idea then and uh, that brings us to the end of this particular question.